I made a double cairn fountain, and here's how I did it. First, I had to grab the rocks, some of which became a tripod, also featured on my channel. Then I had to drill the rocks. This took a while. I went through about seven feet of stone. I keep the bit submerged in water so it doesn't overheat and melt the carbide off of the bit. Now, I had to design a wooden frame that would support about 350 pounds of rocks alone. Now, this is also going to be a house for the box, which is going to hold the water. So it's extremely important this doesn't get wet. So once I had built everything, with my fairly non-existent carpentry skills, I surrounded it in building paper. This is going to help waterproof it. Now, the staples did obviously puncture that, but it was the best way to apply it. And I made sure to layer everything in a way that I hoped would not be penetrated by water. Then I had to apply hardware cloth. This is for the plaster. Now, this is one of many things I would have done differently here because I quickly learned that none of this was what I had imagined, but it's okay. It's a prototype. I was discovering all of this as I did it. So this is something that I wouldn't have done again. I was applying plaster with a brown dye, although the color wasn't what I had wanted and I couldn't apply it as smoothly as I had hoped. And I left some room from the top because that is where tile is going to go. So walking around gave me another perspective and I saw how the grid had also imprinted a texture onto the mortar. Then I had to create a lip so that the tile would have a place to sit. So now I've got all of the lids in. So this overlaps the basin and I'm going to use this four and a quarter inch wide board to get an idea of where my tile's going. So it's gonna overlap the stucco. This looks good. So now I've got to put mortar behind this and the tile. But before I do that, I'm gonna do one more. Same deal with the top, more hardware cloth. Although I would have also made the lip differently. I think that I did not make it as the level as it should have been. And that was going to complicate things. Although at the time I didn't know it. I also used that angle grinder to drill holes in logs for mushroom inoculation, which is another service of Eden and Dane. So I wasn't too happy with the color and there were a lot of patchy spots. So I thought, all right, I will cover it again, smooth out any noticeable blemishes and try to have a bit more color. So the idea was to get it covered in this base coat gray and then spray it with some kind of sandy or beige color. And once I had covered it with some fixing plaster, I had to glue the building paper to the side of the basin. This was going to be, at least what I thought, the final seal for the basin to retain the water. This video is sponsored by Olipop. At least, I hope so. It is my new favorite drink. Seriously, I cannot get enough of this stuff. For someone who's all about avoiding added sugar, about delicious and nutritious ingredients, you cannot beat these. And the banana cream is my absolute favorite. Olipop, please sponsor me. I will drink your sodas all day long, every day. It's actually a problem. It very well may be an addiction. So maybe don't send me too much if you're going to sponsor me. I need some kind of delayed gratification. Anyway. I had moved on to the next step. 
and it was to build the skeleton frame to hold the rocks and provide a channel for the water to go through. So I'm using half inch galvanized steel piping and I'm threading it with a Teflon tape to make sure the connections are tight. I don't want any water leaking because water pressure is going to be an issue. Now, the two pipes are going to have different amounts of water going through them and that is obviously going to affect the water pressure. So, I toiled with the idea of having some kind of blockage to put more pressure in the taller pipe, but I opted against it. I figured I would let water do what water wanted to do. Once the vinyl tubing was attached, it was time to put the posts in. This is a very exciting part because it really gave everything form. And this was the part I was most excited for, the tile. I ordered this from an incredible website with a huge selection of tile. The shipping was excellent. It arrived very quickly. And this was one of the biggest parts of this prototype. I'm not a tile guy. This is the first time I've ever picked up loose tile in my own home. They were just stunning, all of this Mexican Talavera. So I wanted to apply mortar to the sides. However, I did not realize that it had to be a thin set mortar. So I used some kind of cinder block mortar or something. And yeah, it didn't work. So I had to go back, use thin set, and then apply the tiles. And you can see this is why it's unsightly and unlevel so yeah that was a big learning moment but again that's the theme this is a prototype there was so much going into this that i was trepidatious about i didn't know how the tiles were going to go the frame the building paper so on and so forth I had an idea of how the rocks would look. I mean, I've done a bunch of them now. You can check the channel out for other creations and other sculptures, even other fountains. But this was a new one. This was a self-contained above ground fountain with a constructed retainer. So yeah, it was a little bit of an experiment and I'm overall happy with it. I do see manifold flaws within it but we're all going to notice the imperfections in what we create. So it was just trying to appreciate the risk I had taken. This project was probably about six, $700 in raw materials. And I think that was money well spent. Now, am I going to sell this? I don't know, maybe to the right person. Is it going to serve as a basis for future sculptures? Yes, absolutely. The next one I do is going to be far better and I'm very excited to do it. So if you would like something like this, send me a message. I do these based on commission. I do them all over the country although I'm primarily located in Los Angeles and Washington, D.C. Now, I also do standalone sculptures without water, but I'm really loving the water. Additionally, because they also have a benefit of being pollinator friendly. This is a spot for bees and insects, butterflies to have respite and drink water. And because the water circulates, mosquitoes can't lay their eggs there. So it's perfect. You get the benefits of having a pollinator friendly water feature, which is half the battle of having a pollinator friendly yard. Now you just need the plants. And you also have a beautiful sculpture. This is one of a kind. So here's how it turned out. Like I said, the plaster was a bit rough and the tiling was done by someone who had never done tiling before. But 
All said, I'm pretty happy with it. Far, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for taking this little journey with me. And if you want to like or subscribe, that'd be super helpful and pretty cool. So here's the Instagram. Go check it out if you'd like to see any more of this. I post all of my other builds as well as tons of tips, tricks, and ideas about native landscaping, food forest, permaculture, and things like that. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Have a great day.